Hi guys, welcome back. This is video update number 24 and we're back on the fourth floor again. Uh, the last video update was on the attic, the fifth floor. So I moved back down here and I worked a lot. You can see a lot of things going on here. I'm not done yet, but I do want to give you some updates. But before we get on to these updates, I have to backtrack a little bit and talk a little bit about the fifth floor again. Alright, so my last update I completely skipped over how I added this part here, this little decorative piece or cosmetic piece. And I had a comment asking how I did this. And my apologies for not getting it into the video, but I will try to quickly go over what I did to put this piece on. This floor here is actually pieced together. And so there's one piece here, and then there's one piece here. So when I wanted to move on from this floor, when I looked up there, all I saw was this open-ended piece of cardboard, and I don't, I didn't want to see that because it looks totally unfinished. So I took a strip of cardboard, just a thin strip, and I hot glued it around the edge. And I hot glued it in a way that the um, top edge of this strip was flush with the top of this floor so they became flush like this okay and then I just used the hot glue to hold it in place for me until I got paper clay I took the paper clay and I molded it all in place so it's all underneath here I squished it all into that cardboard and into the ceiling so once that paper clay dried this uh, decorative piece here became one piece with the ceiling and the floor all right, hopefully that cleared that question up and wasn't confusing. So sorry, I tried to remember to put everything into video, but sometimes I have so many things going on that um, something like this could get skipped. But I thank you for asking and bringing my attention to it. And I'll do my best not to skip over things like that in the future. All right, so the next thing is my apologies for not getting to this door in the stairs in my uh, video on how I built my freestanding stairs. I ended it by saying we're going to do the door next and since then you can see a lot of things have happened and I haven't gotten to the door yet. I'm still going to do that guys and I'm, I apologize but I have to follow my inspiration as it hits and inspiration hit me like a ton of bricks down here <laughs> so I just want to get these videos and updates out of the way and then we'll come back to that door in the stairs I promise. Okay so before uh, when I worked on this floor there is a little hole in the wall there and the whole idea for that was for it to come out to a branch but I have since changed my mind so there's still a hole there and I'm going to be working something up here I haven't decided yet what's going to happen up here but I moved the idea for coming out to a branch down here onto the main uh, floor of the, of the fourth floor so now there's a hole here and I moved that branch all together. So you can see I'm not done with this branch yet. Um, it continues up and there's a little hole here. I'm going to have lights in this in this uh, part of the branch as well. But I'm going to work more in there after. But I just wanted to show you that uh, part. So I did put a hole here and then I fixed it all with paper clay again. All right, and then I expanded this floor up here just a little bit. And I finally got the bed board into my built-in bed there. And you can see a railing has been put, put in place. And I found that this floor had too much uh, of one color over here. So I kind of broke it up by using some brick. Use some brick work there. And I'm going to go over that in another video. And uh, another new feature is this hole in the wall. This wasn't there before. I decided to um, put some built-ins here so it gives me more space out here. And that's because I ended up having a whole bunch of bark built in here. And what I mean by bark is just tin foil and then uh, masking tape. And that's before I put the bark on. So it, I ended up with a lot more space and I was able to put some built-ins. Alright, so this update is going to cover this part right here, how I built the frame around this floor, how I expanded this floor a little bit. So let's get started.
All right, the next few updates, you're going to see a lot of work done with these twigs. These are maple twigs that I got in my local forest. I'm no expert with wood. Um, I'm just using what I had on hand. These actually have been in my house for about two years, so they are completely dried. They dried out naturally. So you want to work with dry twigs. I'm not an expert, like I said, but I, I do believe you can speed up the drying process by sticking them in the oven. But just Google more information about the wood that you're using before you do that. Just make sure that you have all the information you need for the wood that you're working with. And I've just been peeling off the bark with an X-Acto knife, just carving off the bark using an X-Acto knife. And I am staining my wood with instant coffee. So that's instant coffee mixed with water. One thing to keep in mind, I built this little ladder out of these twigs and I just glued it together with wood glue. After an, an hour, after those sat for about an hour, I picked it up and it was really stuck together and it seemed like it was going to be permanent. But when I started staining uh, the wood with the instant coffee, the instant coffee got into all the little cracks and it fell apart. So the coffee ate away at the glue. And I believe that's because the glue wasn't set yet. I think if I would have left this for about 24 hours, that glue would have held up to the instant coffee. So just keep that in mind when you're building. So when I started building my fourth floor, um, the addition into my fourth floor that you're going to see next, I am gluing in unstained pieces of wood. After I let the glue set, then I went in and I stained it. And I was very careful not to go into the creases where I had any glue. So just keep that in mind as you're building. You don't want the instant coffee to interfere with anything that you're uh, holding together with with wood glue. And again, I'm using wood glue because I have it on hand. Tacky glue, this regular white tacky glue, works just as well. But I'm just using this because I have it on hand and it does grab pretty fast and it's very, very strong. This ladder now, I wouldn't be able to take it apart. I re-glued it after I let that instant coffee dry and it's glued fine. All right, let's get started. In the next clip, you can tell that I'm completely unsure of what I'm doing. <laughs> I'm just trying to build up that little addition floor and I didn't really have a complete idea what I was doing, but I knew what I wanted, so I just got started. And you can see in the end, it worked out really well. All right, let's head over there. All right, so I'm gonna change the look of this a little bit by adding these maple twigs. I just made a hole in my wall there for the end of this stick to fit into, just for an extra added stability. And now I can glue um, the middle part to my board there and just kind of build it up from there. It's hard to see in there, but I glued what I could here and I just have my tape there holding it until that glue dries. And then I glued the end and pushed it quite a ways into the wall. And I'm going to be be repairing some of this with paper clay. I'm not too sure how I'm going to do everything just yet, but I'll just do one piece at a time and see where I can end up here. Okay, I have another piece on this side that I've glued in and it's being held with masking tape. So I think what I'll do is glue the top and bottom here. And leave it dry. Okay, this one, I've been pulling on it pretty hard and it doesn't seem to be moving, so that's good. So I'll just take these masking tapes off. Oh yeah, that's solid. Good. All right, so I have to build some more up here. I have to fill this in, so I'm going to get a, a piece of cardboard and uh, I'll do that on film so you can see how I do these kind of things. So I have my son recording for me for a second here. You see this little space under here? So I'll take a paper and I'll place it underneath. And to get the exact um, design, I'll use my little pencil here and draw it out. So there, I need to transfer that to a piece of cardboard and we're ready to go. So I transferred my uh, tracing of paper onto a little piece of cardboard and I'm just going to add glue all around the edges. All around. Okay, and now I'm going to slip it in place there. 
There we go. It's in. All right, so now what I do is I take a paper clay and I'm going to fill in all that area here. And I'm also going to be covering this ceiling uh, while I'm at it. So once the paper clay is dry, uh, this floor or this ceiling is one solid piece. All right, I've got my paper clay on the ceiling. And like I said, I even put some on the top. In between this cardboard and this stick, I push the paper clay into all the crevices. So once that's dry, like I said, this is going to be one solid unit. It's pretty solid right now, but it definitely helps with that paper clay shoved all in there. And behind here, you can't see, but I have pushed paper clay into all the crevices in between this stick here and these two up here. So in behind there, there's also a layer of paper clay in, in squished in between all the cracks. So we are in the next day and I'm ready to paint that paper clay and you can see up here I added three maple sticks up here too and uh, they were glued in. I used masking tape to hold them to the ceiling while the glue dried. Then I also put uh, paper clay around the ends so it looks like they're going right into the wall. I'm going to paint this so I can get the other uh, support beam up here. It's not really a support beam but um, but this is all sturdy without it, but it's just like it adds a little bit of extra interest. So I'll be putting another one right here after I get this painted. All right, hopefully that's a good angle. I'm going to put the other brace up here, and I'll just show you how I do it. I'm going to put, I could use tacky glue, but I'm going to use wood glue because I have it on hand. And I'm just going to, oh, first before I do that, I'm going to get two pieces of tape ready. I'm using painter's tape because I have it on hand. You can use masking tape as well. I like the painter's tape because it's made for um, ripping off walls and stuff without taking off paint with it. Although the masking tape hasn't been an issue so far, but like I said, I just have it on hand, so... Alright, I'm just going to dab a little glue. This is wood glue on the ends. Get it in position. There. Tape. And tape. Oh, I like that. I think that looks pretty cool. I'm unsure if I'm going to be adding a railing up here or not. Um, if I do, of course, I'll give you an update. If I do. Uh, you can see I added some decorative pieces over there on my shelves. And I'm going to show you how I do those ones when I show you how I built the built-in beds. Because I did them the exact same way as I added the railings to my bed boards. And one last uh, thing before I go. This railing here was added the exact same way I added this one in the end. I put a hole in the wall up here. So I shoved the end of the stick into that wall, added some glue, and then this one is resting on top of this little post here. And it wasn't the strongest thing going, but once I got my paper clay out, there is a bunch of paper clay underneath here that you can't see and it's made this really solid. So once that paper clay dried in there, it's pretty solid. And then glue and everything. And like I said earlier in this video, the stain I added after everything was glued together. Alright guys, we'll end the video here and I will send you over to the next one which is showing you how I built the built-in beds. So let's head over there and check that out.